So next, we have a real treat, and this is probably going to be one of the best sessions of the two-day conference. And uh, one, of the, one of the best. Who, who are we comparing me to? What well, one of the best. Dean, you're kind of up against me. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so um, I can't, I, listen. I can't compete with you and Amy, and you're you are in a symphony of PCCA yeah. blue, and you both. I feel like I'm on Good Morning America. So, <laughs> and I gotta well, thank, thank you. your thank your. You. Uh, I gotta thank your AV guy. I refer to Quentin as Q because I think of is myself Q. as Q. Yes, yeah, and he's, huge, he's Q. Huge shout out right Bond. now to the AV team for all the work they've done through this pandemic, all our virtual education. They're amazing. Everybody out there, give them a round of applause. Nice job, Q. And humbly, thanks for the praise for Amy and I. And I know I, I took a moment there to kind of praise myself, but really, I mean, Matt Martin, you got to hold a candle to Matt Martin too. He, he really rocked yesterday. But anyway, guys, we're in for this treat. So 11 years ago, I thought I was really good at influencing people and getting to yes. I thought this was a skill I'd honed most of my life. And then I went to a Vistage talk 11 years ago and I was just- I still got the cup. I yes, still got Vistage, the cup. Vistage, that's where we met. I was just, uh, I was triggered. I was schooled, I was humbled, and I realized I still had a lot to learn. And I was really blown away by um, this gentleman and what he shared. And what started as just becoming a lifelong learner and a relationship built around like learning and development and teach me really turned into a friendship. And it's a friendship between him and our organization. But uh, we were just chatting over the break. His daughter, Devin, is graduating from college today. Talk Today. about our first principle of honoring commitments. He's here with us. The minute he's done, he's going to be with Devin. So thank you for being with if us. She, if she wants me to. Lizzie, she's 22. I don't know that she wants me to be with her, but that's a whole <laughs> other subject. So exactly. Lizzie, before we jump in, and I'm going to ask you, um, what is it about my stuff that you want everyone to really pay attention to? And I, I just want to say this before we jump in. Many folks on this call have heard me before, have seen me before. And I'm gonna ask you for two things. I'm gonna ask you that you, I'm gonna ask for you to listen with new ears and I'm gonna ask for you to watch with new eyes because I guarantee you that I am speaking with a new tongue. I continue to add to this content. I continue to learn. Um, for me, it's about creating tools that do two things for all of you. Number one, well, the, the ancient Latins had a phrase, Lizzie. They said, utile et dolce. That means useful and sweet. So my goal is to be useful, number one, to everyone on this phone call, that you guys take away things you can apply. And number two, that I can make it easy. I can make it sweet, fun. And I will tell you, Lizzie, you have added as much to me as I have to you. And I learn from you. I learn from PCCA and all the folks that I interact with. So, so before we jump in, if you were to say there was one thing that would have um, sparked your interest in continuing to have me back, what, what would you say that is? That's a really tough question because I don't know what it's one thing, that it's actual one thing, but I, I can tell a story that maybe gets us there, which is that you know, you've always spoken at international seminar, sales and marketing symposiums, that's the natural place to have your content. And then we had this vision in 2019 to bring you into the ACT conference. And I remember calling you and explain, explaining to you what this was and that essentially, you know, there, there's this idea of unequal business stature. There could be some head trash, like I'm going in to talk to a real government official, what have you, and tell my story. And then it's like, how do you overcome that? Mm. And within 10 minutes, build that rapport make the connection, tell the yep. story and get to yes. And yep. this year it's even tougher, right? Because the capital, although the world's opening up, sure. government's still closed. So I think it's, if there is one thing, it's how can we do that process, you know, make the emotional connection, make that science data connection and help people empathize with these patients so that- yeah we can create advocates in government and they'll say yes for us. Yes, and, so, and that's 100% of what I focus on. Right. So and folks, you guys are only gonna need two sheets of paper if you have them, and I can send you all this in notes, but trust me. Okay, I'm Dean, gonna create some yeah. I'm gonna step behind the camera and I'm gonna be- No, 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 you. stay with me. You no. don't wanna, <laughs> don't make them look at me. 
All right. There, okay, all right. and you take over, and I'll be back in the end to oh, facilitate questions. All right, this is going to be scary. It's just going to be me and my <laughs> little friend here. Okay, guys, today we're going to open up this person's brain, and we're going to talk about how they make decisions. So a couple of pieces of background here. Everyone you need a yes from is using this tool. It's the most energy consumptive organ in the body. And today I'm going to share with you some share, some, some shortcuts on how the brain works. So I'll put up some slides in a minute as we go through. I just want you to know that my focus is to help you get better at getting to yes. The universe is not going to allow for the same. If this year taught us anything, the universe is only going to allow us to grow or decline, and it's our choice. Every day we're starting different. Hold on. I'll put this up on the screen so you guys can have a sense of where I'd like you guys to be thinking we're going today with the content. You, every single one of you, whether you uh, have your own pharmacy, whether you work for someone who does, your drive is to continuously get better. It's a pursuit. That drive never ends. And I'm going to share with you a system that you can use to get to yes faster and get to better, every, get better every day. So this year, particularly this year, Lizzie, Lizzie spoke about the challenges that are going on in DC. You know, I don't know that there is a better quote than, uh, than the one from Mike Tyson. And if you guys don't, you folks don't know the quote, and many of you do out there, if you know the quote, just raise your hand. You know, I can't see you, but. The interviewer asked Champ Mike Tyson, did you hear that the contender has a plan to beat you? And Tyson said three things. He said, everyone has a plan till they get punched in the mouth. And that's when they forget the basics. And that's why I'm always going to win. I don't forget the basics. Folks, what I want you to know, this year was a punch in the mouth for just about everyone. It was a punch in the mouth for our kids. It was a punch in the mouth for our parents. It was a punch in the mouth for our clients. And when people get punched in the mouth, Champ Tyson was correct. They forget the basics. So here's a concept I want you to think about. Everything we do about getting to yes is about filling this trust tank. I'm going to give you a formula you can follow. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. If you take out a blank sheet of paper, it's five steps. It's a formula you can follow to fill the trust tank. So think about what's been going on in America this year. People are filled with doubt, uncertainty. They're afraid. They're frustrated. They forget the basics. We're suspicious of everyone. Who's coming into my office? Who's making this phone call to me? I'm going to give you one word. That's resistance. And when people are resistant, we're not going to be able to influence them. We're not going to be able to engage with them. And we're not going to be able to make a difference for them. So if we want to fill this trust tank, if we want this to be full of trust and confidence and clarity and creativity, curiosity, all these amazing things, there is a path we can follow. There is actually a button. I just want to show you something. As I take this person's brain out of their head, there is a button. I know you guys know this because you guys are scientists and there is a button here. Hold on. The brain's falling apart. Here's the top of the spinal cord. The button that people use to make decisions is right here on the top of their limbic system. It's called the amygdala. There is a button we can push to fill the trust tank. And I'm going to give you a sequential process you can follow to fill that tank. It's the word smart. I've been studying behavioral psychology and brain science and sales and marketing best practices for more than 30 years. And the place we're going to start today on the top of a blank sheet of paper, I would like you to write the word S-M-A-R-T. And when we're done today, you're going to have some bullet points filled in. I'm going to give you questions to ask underneath each of these. So if you guys are participating with me, take out a blank sheet of paper, write the word SMART across the top of that sheet of paper. Hold on. Let me actually show you because Q, Q was good enough. Q was good enough to give me a, uh, a, a whiteboard here. So let me pull up a whiteboard. Okay, so if you have a blank sheet of paper, for those of you who have heard me speak before, you know up here, I'm going to have you write the name of the person you want to influence. Who do you want to get a yes from? Whether it's in Washington, D.C., whether it's someone in your family, I want you to know there is a five-part process you can follow to fill the trust tank. And the five steps, number one, I'd like you to write down the word safe. 
No one will do anything with us if they feel at risk. This person whose name you wrote down, start with this question. What's at risk for them? I'm going to talk to you about the brain science behind all of this today. But the first step is to eliminate risk. Second step, to get them in motion. There is a series of small yeses you might be able to get. In behavioral psychology, they call this commitment and consistency. So right here, what I'd like you to think about is, is the ask a large commitment? Can you break it into a series of smaller commitments and start with the first one? That person whose name you wrote down, can you break this commitment up into a series and start with the first commitment in this first interaction? The third step in this process is actually the word ask. And I want you to recognize that the person asking the questions controls the conversation. And one of the biggest tips, not the biggest tip, but one of the biggest tips I can give with you today, the biggest secret of getting to yes is before you go into that meeting with this person, what are the questions you know they're going to ask? And can you answer them before they get asked? The R, this is where the little things become the big things, are about how we relate to people. And some of the most famous scientists in the world have studied this, including Dr. Robert Cialdini, who I worked with on and off for a decade, the most often quoted living psychologist, says, if you want people to like you, there's three shortcuts. Number one, pay them a compliment. When you pay someone an honest compliment, The part of the brain that makes decisions releases a chemical called dopamine. I know you guys know what dopamine does in the human brain. For folks who aren't pharmacists, I tell them it's what heroin used to do in Keith Richards' brain. That's why they call heroin dope and heroin addicts dope addicts. You could be natural drug dealers. Folks, the little things are the big things. Look for what you can pay someone an honest compliment on and their brain releases dopamine. Second C, if you want people to relate to you, find things in common. Be willing to open yourself up and let them know something about you. The most powerful of these three Cs, though, especially with what's been going on in the world, is the word collaborate, collaboration. The three words to use when you're engaging with anyone, if you want them to know that you are in this with them, are we us, and our. These are what scientists call words of unity. And the final T is actually the word trust. And I use a little acronym here. It's my daughter's name, Dev, to remind me that diplomas, actually what we see on the wall, hanging on the wall, what we see as a uniform, I call this a diploma. The way we show up sends a message. When we see Harvard on the wall, it's a shortcut for us, okay? Folks, you can create a 3D diploma, and I'll show you how before we get done with today's session. The E stands for evidence. Human beings look for proof in what others have already done. Think about the sign underneath McDonald's. Billions and billions served is giving you evidence of what others have done before you. And the final, the V stands for vulnerability. People who admit to not knowing all of the answers, we actually trust more than people who pretend they know all the answers. Okay, so I'll go through these all at the end again. I just want you to know that there are five shortcuts from brain science and everything starts with these five shortcuts. Anyone you wanna get a yes from. So hopefully you've taken out two sheets of paper because I'm going to have you create two tools today. I'm a tool builder. I'm someone who takes pride in building tools that others can use to be more effective. I think of all of you as having hammers and chisels and you're building what you want. I want to give you new tools you can use because they didn't exist before for me and I want them. So I started building them for myself. So on that first sheet of paper, I had you write the word smart across the top. So again, if you have not done that already, I'd like you to take a moment right now, find a blank sheet of paper, write the name of the person you want to influence up top, 
And I'd have you write safe, motion, ask, relate, and trust. Believe it or not, in the quick intro, I gave you 21 behaviors, which I refer to as the essentials. And if any of you would like a list of them to use as a checklist, send me an email at dean at yescalate.com and I will send you the list of the 21 essentials that I just went through. So top five brain shortcuts, I just shared them with you. It's all about engagement. How do we engage face-to-face? That's with someone outside of our organization. We need to get to yes with someone who's not part of our team, but we also need to get to yes with each other side by side with our team. So not only am I going to share with you an engagement model you can use when you go into these meetings to get a yes, I'm also going to share with you an engagement model to use with each other when you leave each meeting, because we can continually get better as we have these meetings. And one of the things I had the most fun with, other than having dinner with uh, with Lizzie and her husband, and I think there was a little bourbon involved and we were on a rooftop. It was pretty cool actually being in DC and going into the Capitol buildings. It was actually fantastic. But one of the things I enjoyed most was after we walked into each office, there's a very simple coaching model that I use with anyone I'm engaging with to help them get better. So I want you to know the first thing I want to help you do is get better at getting a yes. The second thing I want to help you do is get better yourself. And there's two questions I'm going to have you consider asking after you go in and meet with a legislator or after you have a phone call. The first question is, what did I do well? What worked? And the second question I want you to ask is, what am I going to do differently In the next meeting, I put together a model, which I call the coaching path, which stands for prepare, ask, task, and hold, which is based on the debriefing model that the U.S. Air Force uses after every flight. It's based on the after action review model that they use in the military. And it's these these two questions. What do we do well and what are we going to do different? So often we beat ourselves up. I want you to notice These two questions don't include, what did I do wrong? They include, what did I do well? And what am I going to do different? I want you focusing on your best practices and getting better. Because the third person I want you to engage with is yourself. Our brain releases chemicals. And when you guys go into these meetings, your brain is going to be releasing fight or flight chemicals. And there's a model you can use to reframe those chemicals as excitement so that you can get excited before you go into that meeting. All right, so that's where we're headed for the rest of the time today. We're going to talk about engagement face-to-face. We're going to talk about engagement with each other, and we're going to talk about how we can do that with ourselves. And I'm going to share with you some of my toolkit, which is part of the Yescalate system, so that you guys can apply this stuff immediately. Okay, so back to back to me full screen for a second. Let me just go here and let me pull this up here for a second. Boop, boop, boop. A couple of things I want you to know about the human brain. Number one, the brain is predictable. We know more about how people make decisions now than we've ever known in human history. People will, we can predict how people will make decisions. I'm going to share with you an example. If Lizzie was here, was here, or someone was here with me from uh, PCCA, I'd, 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 I'd do this little example with them. But let me just share with you what happens. That Vistage group that Lizzie was talking about, it's the largest executive uh, training organization in the world. It's actually the largest CEO membership organization, 26,000 members. The, sh- the summary that I'm going to share with you, I've presented to more than 9,000 of them over the last 13 years. And I ask a question, I pick one person, and I can predict what their answer is going to be. I pick one person in the audience, and let's say it's you who's here on this call with me. And suppose we're walking down the street in Denver, and neither of us are from Denver, and we're looking for a great restaurant. And there's two restaurants up ahead. One's full of people. The the other is completely empty. The question I ask is, which one has the better food? 
And 9,000 people I've asked that question to within Vistage have all given me the same answer. They say the one with more people. And I want you to know that that's predictable, but it's not rational. The question I asked is which one has the better food? The question that they answered is which one looks less risky? What I want you to know is this, people use shortcuts to make decisions. If you understand what those shortcuts are, you can help them say yes faster in an honest and ethical way. For example, that's why Ray Kroc has billion, had billions and billions on the McDonald's sign to basically say a lot of people have already made this decision, the same as that restaurant that has a bunch of people at it. So we start here, folks. The brain is predictable. The second thing I want you to know is the brain likes predictable. If you take one thing away from today's session, please write down these two words. No surprises. People don't like when you surprise them. Surprise means risk. Change is potential danger. And the brain's job is to keep you alive. So the brain is predictable and the brain likes predictable. There's two things every person's brain is focused on in any given day. This person whose name you wrote down, they only have two goals, folks. The first goal is their survival. That's why the brain is using so much energy. So here's a question I want you to consider. If you wrote down the name of a person you need a yes from, I'd like you to consider this question. Are they related to you? And the reason I'm asking you that question is, the second question, will they go to sleep tonight praying for you and your children? And the answer is no, if they're not related to you. That doesn't make them a bad person. It makes them human. Folks, that person whose name you wrote down, they're focused on one thing. What's in it for them? They're listening to the signal from the radio station, WIIFM. How quickly can you tell them what's in it for them? I'm going to give you a shortcut that you guys, you folks can use when you go into these meetings to lobby. And the shortcut is the word ask. You know what's in it for them? You provide access for their constituents. You provide specialized solutions for their constituents who have special problems. And you provide knowledge that those people and the lawmaker can't get elsewhere. Right now, write down the word ask because you can build your presentation. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the microphone. You can build your presentation around those three simple things, access, solutions, and knowledge. The word is ask. And why do you want to do this? Because of the second goal the brain has. Remember the first goal, to keep them alive. The second goal, though, is to use as little energy as possible to achieve the first goal. Please write this down, folks. Easy always wins. Easy always wins. It's why Jeff Bezos is the second richest guy in the world. And as soon as Vladimir Putin dies, Jeff Bezos is going to be the richest guy in the world. Because everything Amazon does is about making it easy for people. Remember, we focus on ourselves, and we want to use as little energy as possible. We want to make it easy. So the two terms, and by the way, take out your second piece of paper because I'm going to have you draw something out in a moment that you can use on the back of a bar napkin when you're preparing for a meeting. We're going to draw out two axes, but before you do that, remember the first goal of the human brain is to stay alive. Scientists refer to this as a cognitive bias. We have a bias towards survival. And remember the second goal in the human brain is to use as little energy as possible to achieve the first goal. That's what we call cognitive costs. So for those of you who come from a sales and marketing background, you probably have heard this phrase, price always matters. Guess what the price of a decision is? The amount of energy we have to use to make that decision. Do you wanna lower the cost of a decision? Focus on how you can make that decision easier for folks. Okay, so I'm going to put all this together now on your second sheet of paper. So what I'd like you folks to do, you have one sheet of paper that you had written the word SMART on. I want you to pull out a second sheet of paper, and I'm going to have you draw this chart. Hold on, let me make this big. I call this the brain's GPS. And what I'd like you to do, please, I'd like you to consider 
drawing an axis up the center of your page. Oh, let me make this blue. It might be easier for you to see. Up the center of your page and across the middle of your page. So you now have four quadrants. Up here, this, this time let's do it up here. Write the name of the person you want to make, you want to get a yes from. Because I'm going to share with you a button you can push to get that yes faster. It's up there in that top left corner because the brain has a GPS. It always wants to be up there where that button is. The G stands for gain. Please label the top of your page high gain. And down here where it says low gain, I want you to put loss. Human beings want to avoid loss, want to avoid risk. To the degree we can eliminate the potential for loss and risk, people will pay more attention. How much more? Four to five times more, according to scientists who have studied a concept called loss framing, which means let them know what's at risk, but immediately let them know that they are not going to lose in this interaction. Just for symbolic purposes, I'd like you to put a dollar sign here, just so that we think of gain as something, as a metric we can measure. But it doesn't have to be just dollars. It might be. It might be donations. It might be votes. Those are big gains for legislators. Your second axis. Folks, please label this axis with the word pain. So this gives us our GPS because I'm giving you a gain pain scale. Remember, number one goal, to stay alive. That would be high gain. Second goal, to use as little energy as possible to achieve that first goal. I would like you to write the word ease here. And if you would, put a smiley face just as a symbol. Okay, so we have four quadrants. I'm just going to label two of them for today's session. Quadrant number one is this quadrant right here. High gain and easy. Remember how we started this session? I used the ancient Latin phrase, utile et dolce, useful, useful, and sweet. Can you tell me, for that person whose name you wrote down up here, can you tell me their three biggest gains, what's in it for them, in listening to you and doing what you ask? And can you give them the three ways that you are going to make this easy for them? People want you to be quadrant one and to give them quadrant one things. Lizzie is a quadrant one customer for me. Lizzie didn't call me and ask me to speak at one event. The first time Lizzie wrote to me, she asked me to speak at seven events. And she told me, I'm going to pay you up front. Lizzie became a quadrant one client. PCCA is a quadrant one client for me. There are not many clients I would run an event the morning of my daughter's graduation for. Lizzie is one of them. And I will just share with you the other quadrant I want you to be thinking about today is the quadrant I want you to make sure you avoid. This is quadrant four. This is the quadrant of pain and loss or risk. I refer to this quadrant as the no D no privileges quadrant. There are clients who are hard to work with and who don't generate a lot. Those are folks that I don't choose to continue working with. Those are folks, my assistant Sarah actually keeps a list it's called the no Dino privileges list. Now, before I put someone on that list, and you guys may have customers who are the same. In fact, before we go any farther, take a moment and write the name of a quadrant one customer for you. Someone who's high gain and easy. Now take a moment and write the name of a quadrant four customer for you. Someone who's painful and doesn't generate a lot of gain for you. What's the difference? As an organization, have you defined what your quadrant one customers look like so that you can find more of them? Do you know what these factors are? 
for the purpose of what you guys are doing in, in DC, I want you to think of this as a magic mirror. I want you to put yourself in that chart, let's call it your target, the legislator, the lawmaker, and I want you to ask yourself, how quickly can I tell them this is quadrant one for them? How quickly can I share what's in it for them and how we're going to make this easy for them? Because if anyone sees you as quadrant four, they may put you on their no Dino privileges list. Now, as I said, before I put someone in the no Dino privileges list, I'm going to try to do two things. First thing I'm going to try to do is make them easier to work with. I'm going to see if I can move them into this quadrant. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can generate more gain from them. But by the way, if I can't do either of those two things, I'm not going to keep working with them. So let me pause here for a second. And I'm just going to go in and Quentin, let me ask, can we see the, can you guys see the chat box? If I ask for a little temperature check here and ask for a show of hands or for folks to tell me whether they've taken something already of value. Q, are you there? Can you help me uh, to, to, to ask this question of the audience? All right, cool. Uh oh, who's this? It's Renee. Yeah. Oh, my I know goodness. Renee gets to make an appearance. Holy smokes! I, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened here, but PCCA has has some newscasters that are going to make Fox and CNN awful envious. How are you, <laughs> Rockstar? Hi, I'm doing great. I'm so glad I wore my PCCA blue oh. shirt so that I could run up on stage and come say hi to you guys. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I'd be able to see chat, but I'm wondering if just as a show of hands. If anyone can give me a yes, if they're taking value from today's session. Yes, I, yeah, I can see the chat. We have, yep, uh, yes, we can, yes, yes, yes. Um, reduce <laughs> risk for the lawmakers to make yes easier. Excellent, excellent. So um, at a certain point at the end here, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is this same little checklist that I've asked you to think about for the lawmakers. I'm going to ask that you use this checklist on today's session for me. Were there things in today's session that you found are high gain and would be easy for you and your team to do? I'd like you to make a list of them up in here. What are the items? Because at the end of this session, I'm going to ask you to share them with me. Now, if there are things that seemed hard, also maybe ask me a question for the end of this session. So maybe I can see if I can make that easier for you guys to do. So Renee, Perfect. thank you. I, yeah, we I, have I, yeah we have a lot of yeses coming through for sure. So um, yeah, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put it put it in the Q and A, uh, and Lizzie or I will be back and can go through those when you finish, Dean. All right, thank you. I had to catch my breath there. It's not normal that I'm sitting here. Thank you, Renee. So folks, cognitive biases, the shortcuts that the human brain uses, we look for shortcuts. And if you were to look this term up on the internet, there is a codex of cognitive biases that looks like this. Go into Wikipedia if you wanted to research this. There are 188 shortcuts that scientists have documented that people use to make decisions faster. Any one of these you guys can use, whether it's with a lobbyist, whether it's someone on your team or yourself. I refer to them as brain whispers. And remember the brain's job. Number one, the goal is to keep us alive. And number two, it's to use as little energy as possible. So let me just summarize here. Three primary triggers that human beings use. Now, this is a little checklist that you might consider writing out before you go into your next meeting. I told you you'd only need two sheets of paper. So this could fit over on the first sheet of paper if you want. If you write the word alpha, but then do this with the A. Turn the A into a little radio station. I want you to remind yourself that anyone you want to get a yes from is listening to the radio station WIIFM. Can you tell them what the military calls the bluff? which stands for bottom line up front. Often CEOs will ask me to review their presentations. I had a CEO who said he needed a huge yes 
and asked me to have dinner with him. So we go to this Morton Steakhouse and I told him to bring his presentation with him, his PowerPoint. And he brought it. It was 42 PowerPoint slides, 42 PowerPoint slides. And I said, before I look through all of this, what is the most important slide in there? And he said, it's this one. And he showed me it was at slide 37. Folks, he was going to walk this person through 36 pieces of information before he got to the bottom line. So before we go any farther, what is the most important thing? And can you show it to that person first? So remember, human beings pay attention over time in a predictable way. They will not pay attention to us, high attention, the entire time we speak to them. The brain actually gets triggered at the beginning, it goes into a sleep mode, and it gets triggered again at the end of an event. Folks, you have two moments of power. When you walk into someone's office or when you start a presentation and when you leave, I want you to make sure you take the most important thing you're going to say and that you practice saying it up front. In the best of all worlds, it's 30 words or less. What can you do for them and their constituents in 30 words or less? And I'm going to suggest you might want to build it around something you can remember, like the word ask. Access, solutions, specialized knowledge. I think this is a very powerful way for you folks to build your message. But remember, bottom line up front, human beings don't like to waste energy. Now, we do spend energy trying to keep ourselves alive. So the second concept I'd like you to write down is the word delta. And if you remember from your math class, delta is symbolized with a triangle which means change or difference. Human beings are constantly scanning the environment for anything that might put us at risk. And when there's delta, delta means difference. Difference we see as danger. So remember, if you're asking this lawmaker to change something, their first human reaction is going to be that thing is going to put them at risk. You are asking them to do something different. The brain doesn't like different. Right now, I'm in my new home studio here. Let me just, let me just stop this share for a second. I just moved recently. I moved, uh, I moved back to Pennsylvania from, uh, from Florida. Here was, uh, here was the view outside my home. This is Boca Siega Bay on St. Pete Beach. I was in the middle of a presentation, folks. That's the view in the back of my office in Florida. I was on a Vistage presentation with a group in the Silicon Valley. I got halfway through my presentation and Hurricane Etta hit. So if I snap my fingers, that's what it looked like when the hurricane started. That's what the CEOs on this call could see behind me. That dock halfway through my talk was three feet underwater. The water came up into the pool that you see behind me hit the back of the house. By the way, that's when the power went out on St. Pete Beach. The last thing that these CEOs saw in my presentation was me like this. And I was frozen on screen. So that change that was going on, they could see, and I'm sure it was stressing them out. But me, I was just in a normal business meeting because I'm looking in front of me and I didn't see that change happen. When change, any change happens, people see it as potential danger. So let me go back here and let me just fill this in as I was. Delta means difference. If you're taking notes, any difference we see as danger. And what you need to know is change. Number three, triggers decisions. One decision is to do nothing. It's easier for human beings to remain safe if we freeze. It's not just fight or flight, folks. It's fight, flight, and freeze. And a lot of people last year froze. A lot of people went into fight. A lot of people went into fright. A lot of people froze. And think about anyone you need to make a decision. And I'm just you know, a bystander here thinking about a lawmaker who we're going to ask to do something different. 
unless we eliminate their risk, it's safer for them to do nothing. So here's the key question here. What is at risk for that lawmaker? And how can you eliminate their risk? The story that I've been telling since 2007 is about Hyundai, the motor, the, the car company. In 2007, Americans stopped buying cars. Hyundai that summer came out with a marketing campaign. It's the most successful marketing campaign in the history of selling cars, folks. They sold 1.5 million units over the course of two and a half years. Here's the campaign. Many of you will remember it. If you lose your job, we'll make your payments for you. That's the Hyundai Assurance Program. It's got nothing to do with cars. What does it have to do with? Eliminating risk. Millions of Americans thought that their jobs were at risk, so they stopped buying cars. Hyundai eliminated that risk for them, and those millions of Americans bought Hyundais. Take a guess how many cars Hyundai had to make a payment on because Americans lost their job. Folks, you can look it up. It's less than 350. Risk freezes people. So before you go into that meeting, ask yourself, what's at risk for the person I want to influence and how can I eliminate their risk? But now I need to share with you the biggest suggestion. Now, I've shared with you some others that I said were big. What I'm going to share with you now is the biggest suggestion. And it has to do with how information gets to our brain. This is the person you need to influence. Whether it's someone you're trying to sell an idea to, whether it's a lawmaker, you want to get to change a decision or to take some action. There's only five ways, folks, only five for you to get information into this person's brain. You ready? There's only five channels by which the brain accepts information from the outside world. The eyes, the ears, the nose, and the mouth, the five senses. Of the five, four are almost irrelevant for moment-to-moment -moment decision making. One is the king. Information gets into your brain 30 times faster through the eyes than through the ears. The ancients actually had a word, which was the verb to see. It's also the verb to understand. It's the same verb. And it's pronounced video. We say video. That's where our word video comes from, which is the power of visuals. Here is the biggest tip that I can give you. Never say it if you can show it. There's three or four ways for you to make any message more visual. Let me give you the three most powerful. Number one, take your words and turn them into pictures. What can you show this person? Even more powerful than pictures, faster to understand would be videos. Remember, a photo is one dimension. A video is two dimension. And here's what we now know from brain science. The brain doesn't differentiate folks between virtual reality and reality. When we see something in a movie, we get scared. You know why? Because it looks real to our brain. It's there. It's moving. You know, when I put when I put my home office back here and when I put Hurricane Etta, it looks like, okay, you get it. How can you make your message visual? One way is with pictures. Another way is with videos. But the most powerful visual is life itself. That's 3D. Can you bring something to the person? Can you bring the person to something? We know, for those of you who have an opportunity, who have had some lawmakers come to your places of business, it's easier and faster for a lawmaker to understand when they see it. In fact, for most of us, our whole lives, when we say the words, I see, we're basically saying, I understand. I see what you want means I understand. So checklist, let me summarize for you. Three words, write them down again, folks. Repetition is the mother of learning. Number one, alpha. Do I know what's in it for them? 
And have I created a little GPS so that I can show them quadrant one? Number two, delta. Am I asking for a change? Am I asking to do something which might be risky? I want you to identify the risk and let them know how you're ask, what you're asking them to do will eliminate that risk. Who in their geography, who in the markets and the cities and the towns that they serve are at risk? And how is not having access to you, not having the solutions you provide, not having the knowledge you provide, in effect, not only going to affect that, that person's constituents, but it's going to affect them personally. Be the change. Show them how you are the change. You are the delta. And it's not just about getting a yes. It's about making a difference. And I know that's why you guys do what you do. Every single one of you guys, gals, please don't take the generic term guys. I, I, you know, I, I had recently someone told me that we're, we use that word way too much. Folks, I'm not going to say the word y'all, but I am going to say folks. Folks, you can be the change and you need to let them know that the change is good. It's not dangerous. Number three, write down the word video and ask yourself, how can I make my message to this person more visual? What can you bring with them? What can you bring with you to show them? All right. Take a look through your notes. Take a look through your notes. What have I shared with you that you found useful? If you want, put it in an email to me. I may not have the opportunity to interact with all of you here on this phone call, but know that I do want to interact with you. Smart. Let's review. I'm going to share with you 21 bullet points. The first three were around focusing on what's in it for them. Remember, alpha, identifying and removing any risk and making it easy. That's delta. And making your message visual. That's video. Underneath safe, a couple of bullet points. Number one. People won't do anything if they feel at risk. Have you identified the risk for that person and can you eliminate it? We see risks in the form of what scientists call forcing mechanisms. There are three forcing mechanisms that I'm going to share with you right now, which you might be able to use with these lawmakers or whoever you want to influence. You ready for the three folks? Deadlines, penalties, and limited numbers. Think about the busiest day of the year at the U.S. Post Office. It's April 15th every year. Why? Because there's a deadline and a penalty, and those forcing mechanisms force millions of Americans to do something they normally don't want to do, which is to go and pay their taxes. The challenge is, People don't like being forced. You yourself do not like when people use limited numbers and deadlines on you. There is a magic word you can use so that people don't see a forcing mechanism as forcing them, but as helping them reduce their risk. And the word is because. According to Dr. Robert Cialdini and others, the word because is a trigger word. It says you have a reason. You need to file your taxes by April 15th because that's the deadline and the IRS is going to come after you if you don't. Car dealer could do the same thing. If a car dealer says to you, I need your answer by noon on Saturday, you think they're trying to force you. But I just put an order in for a new car, folks, and the car dealer told me, Dino, I need your answer by noon on Saturday because the build order for the July build starts on Monday. Now, you can give me your order whenever you want. I just want you to know if you want to have this car by September, I need to have the order by Saturday or else it's not going to go in until the August build and you won't get your car till October. Ah, they have a valid reason. I just want you to know this card, when you're looking to get a yes, will increase compliance to your request four to five times. If you can let people know you know what's at risk, 
If you can use forcing mechanisms and the word because to eliminate their risk. Okay, let's move on to the next card, motion. Remember, a thing in motion stays in motion. You guys remember that, Sir Isaac Newton. Fastest way for you to get someone in motion is to take a large commitment and to break it into smaller commitments and to focus on one for today. So the colloquial term we use for this is chunk it up. Chunk it down, man. Break it into small pieces. Don't overwhelm people with something huge. The brain likes easy. We find small pieces to be easier to digest. So thinking about that person whose name you wrote down, if you're back on this first sheet of paper, follow through. Number one, how can you show them that they're safe? Number two, how can you create some motion with them? I'll give you another higher level tip to get them to participate gets them in motion. One of the most active things you can get someone to do is to take out a pen and a piece of paper and write things down. The third bullet point I'm going to give you under motion. Number one, remember a thing that started will stay. Number two, remember, chunk it down. Number three, have someone take out a pen and paper. We now know that when people write things down, the visual part of their brain is activated. We watch ourselves writing things down. So visuals actually imprint the brain. Here's the interesting thing. You have seen me doing this so far in all of my talks. Before I tell you something, I tell you how many of them there's gonna be. If I tell you there's gonna be four things, many of you take out a piece of paper and write one through four. I want you to use that same framing technique with the person you want to influence. Tell them how many things you're going to tell them before you tell them. It makes it far easier for the brain to process. Make it three or four if you can. The brain has a harder time remembering big things. The upper limit for things we can remember quickly is seven that was done by the Bell, uh, Bell Labs when they started figuring out how long a phone, a phone number you should be, the original AT&T, et cetera, was seven digits. That's what people could remember. What we now know, three or four is the number if you are really wanting to make it easy for people to stick to. So let me go on to the number three shortcut from brain science. And here I'm going to give you four things, four Cs. First C, the person asking the questions is in control. You want to answer people's questions before they can bring them up, because if someone asks you the question before you've answered it, it might feel to them and you like an objection. The best way to handle an objection is to answer it before it gets asked. Second C is about context. When you ask people questions, you create context, you create framing, and you, you do the same thing for them. You let them have a sense of how does this relate to them based on the questions you're asking. It might be a question about, you know, the, do, are they aware? Would they like to know how many of their constituents are affected by this? Would they like to know the dollar impact of people being affected by that? The questions you ask can create context. And the easiest way for you to frame a question is with the word, I'm just curious. Sorry for my spelling today. No one gets offended when we say, I'm just curious. And I want you to know why. The Latin verb cura, which forms our word curious or curiosity, means to care. The way we manifest our care in the world is by being curious. The way lawmakers can manifest their care and what you're sharing with them is by being more curious. We want to spark their curiosity. The third C, though, the more you know about this lawmaker, the more questions you ask beforehand, before you get in there, whoever you're trying to influence, the third C is confidence. And I want you to know this, the part of the brain that releases chemicals, 
Those chemicals are felt inside of us and other members of our species can sense those chemicals. When we're afraid, when we go into fight or flight, our brain releases chemicals. If we decide we're going to fight someone, our brain releases chemicals to our skin to prepare us to take a hit and not have, us stop, have it stop us. Fly. If we decide we're going to take off, fight or flight, if we're going to fly, our brain sends chemicals to our legs. We actually run faster when we're frightened. When we're confident, our brain releases chemicals too. The more confident you can be, the more you know about this lawmaker, the more you know about how this issue impacts them and their constituents, whoever this person is you're trying to influence, the more you can exhibit confidence when you relate to them. So the book, if you're interested in reading more about this, the chemicals that the brain releases, I just want to give you a sense here. The person who wrote the book is somewhat, um, he's offended, I'll just say that, millions of people around the world recently. The book is called 12 Rules for Life, and he's a brain scientist and a critical thinker. And I'm not suggesting that we need to agree with everything that Dr. Jordan Peterson has written. I am going to tell you this. The first chapter in that book is worth a listen on Audible, because the first chapter in the book talks about the power of chemicals that we release when we feel confident, and that every species on the planet which has a spinal cord releases when they feel confident. Folks, we can do things physically to prime our system to feel certain ways. There is a physical posture we can take on if we want to feel more confident. Hold on, I'm gonna show it to you here in a second. Let me go like this so it's just me. Hopefully this is just me here on the screen. Folks, two lobsters fight for dominance on the ocean floor. The male lobster who wins takes on a physical posture of victory and emits victory chemicals into the water. The male lobster who loses takes on a physical posture of defeat and releases defeat chemicals into the water. Let me show you because the postures are very similar in other species, even in ours. A male lobster who wins does what Rocky Balboa did when he got to the top of the steps in Philadelphia at the museum. Folks, what's the universal symbol for victory in humans? It's this. Guys, go like this. This is happy lobster. Okay, the lobster who wins puts his claws up like this. And guess what the other male lobsters do? They back off because no one wants to mess with someone when they're on a winning streak. The female lobsters don't back off. They get closer to him. It's kind of winner take all in the lobster world. The interesting thing for me, though, is not so much what happens with the winning lob lobster. It's what happens to the losing lobster. The lobster who loses takes on a physical posture of defeat. And it looks like this, claws down, slumped over. He emits a chemical in his brain. According to Jordan Peterson, that chemical is called octopamine. Wait for it, folks. Octopamine begins the process of breaking that lobster's brain into pieces. Losing blows a lobster's mind. I want you to keep this in mind because before you go into that meeting, whoever you're going in to meet with, I want you to build up those happy lobster chemicals. Let me put this back up on the screen. One of the ways you can build those happy lobster chemicals and go in feeling confident is to make sure before you go in, you have prepared. You have asked enough questions. Part of your preparation needs to be, have I identified what's at risk? Part of your, gener your preparation needs to be, can I get them to participate with me? And can I break the commitment up into smaller commitments? Part of your preparation also needs to be, can I identify at least three things, and I'm going to give you six as a bonus, three things that I can immediately do to have this person I'm trying to get a yes from relate to me. Number one, can I pay them an honest compliment? Because remember, when we pay someone a compliment, their brain releases dopamine. Dr. Stephen Covey, in his beautiful book, The Seven Habits, said this, a compliment is a deposit we make in another human being's emotional bank account. The little things are the big things. In your preparation for this meeting, have you identified things that this person is doing well? 
When you look around the office, what can you pay them a compliment on? Second C, find things in common. In your preparation, have you identified things that you have in common with this person you're trying to influence, whether it's a lawmaker or someone else? You know, what is their stated vision for what they want to accomplish? What's your business's stated vision? So you can start there, but you can also get down to a personal level. Folks, this is personal. We're dealing with people when we're trying to get a yes. We like people who are like us. So look to find things in common. The third C is the most powerful of the Cs, and I shared it with you earlier, it's collaborate. What we want this person to know is we got their back. They are safe and we're going to help them eliminate risk. In fact, I want you to consider using that phrase, we got your back. We got your back because we're going to help people have access and you're going to have access to us. If you need more information, we're going to provide solutions for your constituents that they can't get elsewhere. And we're going to provide knowledge to you as a lawmaker about what's going on and how this affects people in your districts, etc. It's all about collaboration. There is a concept in psychology called reciprocity. And it basically says this, when we give something to someone, they feel pressure to reciprocate, to give back. So the next three bullet points are all about what we can give to someone. First, can we invite them to something? Is there something you can invite that target to that they can come and that can participate in that would give value to them? Number two, can we introduce them to someone? Your network is extremely valuable. You folks know a ton of people. Think about who you can connect that person with. Make the offer first. And third is information. Can you package information in bite-sized, easy chunks? Three bullet points, four bullet points, that's it. And can you come up with, in the best of all worlds, an acronym to help people remember that? Here's my acronym for these five. It's SMART. I've, I've thought about an acronym that would work for, for you folks and what you're doing at the ACT conference, and it's ASK. You provide access, you provide solutions, and you provide knowledge, and you're there because you have an ASK of them and for them. All right, let's move on to the T. I shared with you folks earlier, and I'm running out of uh, I'm running out of space on my screen. I shared with you earlier a trigger, an acronym to remember the three primary triggers to trust. Number one, the way your expertise shows up. Yes, I'm actually talking about what's hanging on the wall or what people see behind you. You know, when you're in a Zoom meeting, this is part of your uniform the way you show up. And I'm actually talking about what you wear. I'm not telling you it's right, folks. I'm telling you people will judge you based on what they see. I'm not telling you it's right. I am telling you that my largest client, the Hartford, the contact there is still my client, runs a company called Arch Insurance. He's an executive VP there. 22 years later, he remembers that I was driving an S500 Mercedes when I took him and his peer out to lunch in our first meeting. I'm not telling you it's right. I'm telling you after I dropped them off, they, they looked at each other and said, anyone driving a car like that must know what they're doing. People are going to package, people are going to pass judgment on the way you and your team is packaged, the way your information is packaged. We look, when we look up on a wall, we look to see what the doctor's diploma is. What is your diploma when you walk into a legislator's office or anyone's office? I want you to think about coming up with a 3D diploma. 3D, guys. What do you do in 30 words or less? Who have you done it for and how long have you done it? And how can you demonstrate the results in a way that lets them know what's in it for them? And I would suggest you can tell this 3D story with the acronym ASK. 
What you do is about access. What you've done is create solutions and you want to share your knowledge and demonstrate for them how that is of value for them. So take a moment, think about the way you and your team show up and think about the power of coming up with a 3D diploma to tell that story. Second shortcut to trust is what psychologists call social proof. But for the purposes of my training, I refer to it as evidence. The fastest way to show people evidence is in the form of some sort of customer testimonial. Think about the McDonald's sign, billions and billions served, is nothing but a huge customer testimonial. Are you prepared to bring a testimonial, some sort of evidence with you That is social proof for these folks of how your solutions have impacted people's lives. And the V in this little trust model is about vulnerability. You don't have to know all the answers, folks. In fact, we trust people more when they admit that they don't know something. So a little tool that I've learned from this organization, which is called Vistage, the CEO membership organization from the chairs there, is to create something that they call a parking lot. If something comes up in a meeting and you don't know the answer, I want you to actually write on a sheet of paper the words parking lot. And I want you to let the person know, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm gonna write it right here. I'm gonna put it in this parking lot And I want you to know, I'm going to make sure I come back to you with that answer. You don't have to know all the answers. All right, let me pause there. So we're at 12.06. Let me take a little breather. Q, you there? Is Renee or Amy, is someone jump back on and give me a little breather? Let me know what we got in the chat boxes. Let me know we're still connected all right. I'll hold on for you guys. Aha! My favorite! Can you hear me okay, Lizzie? Hold on, I can't hear you. We got to... Okay, am I on now? Now I got you. Now I got you. I my mic off. What we got, got, Lizzie? My son just got an internship at PCCA. How exciting is that? So he was just telling me. (laughs) You want him? You want oh, him to say hello? Exciting. Dean has what? never met him. Do you want to I, see I'm him right real quick? Now I'm filled with, with, right read now the I'm chat. Come up here, real quick. Get out! Is there this an actual Jack Dragon? All the PCCA members want. Come on, Jack Dragon! You remember when he was a baby? This is Jack, Jack Dragon. Dragon. What's up, buddy? How's How are you? Doing How are you, you, movie star? You're leaning to the Man, mic. your mom is so proud of you. And I have heard stories about you since you were selling sneakers on the internet, man. <laughs> I appreciate sneakers. that. That's awesome. So there you go. Okay. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. I'll need to make an appearance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I used to take him um, to PCCA seminars when he was three years old. So hopefully, I thank you it. members for indulging me real quick. This is a big moment. Okay. What are we looking at in chat? Hey, he's taller than I thought he was. He's a basketball player. He's tall. I, I, I knew he was a sneaker reseller and a basketball card uh, enthusiast, but he is big enough to be a basketball yes, player. Yes, he is, he is a player as well. Okay. So I don't see anything in chat that I should be reading to you, Dean. All right. So we're still cool. We're still moving forward. We've got forward. comments. Want- um, hit the dopamine button. 3D diploma. What an easy tool to remember how to share who we are, and bluff, bottom, line, up, front. Awesome. Thank you, Lizzie. That's what you wanted? Perfect. That's what I wanted. Thank okay. you. I just And I plus I got a chance to meet Jack, so it was all bonus for me. That was awesome. So, Lizzie, I've been sharing with them a model for how to fill this trust tank. And oh, thank I've been, you for I've been listening it. to the model. I loved the uh, diploma evidence video, right? Awesome. Yes, yes. very good. All right, so I'll jump back in. Thank you, Lizzie. Okay, thanks. So remember, folks, here's where people start. And here's where you you, yourself can start. You can be filled with doubt. You can apply the same model to yourself. If you want to fill this trust tank, 
Let me give you a couple of tips right now. Number one, remember you're safe. It might feel like you're at risk, but remember there's no saber toothed tiger coming at you. Let yourself know you're safe. Number two, get yourself in motion by making some small commitments. You know, the old phrase, the way to eat an elephant, one bite at a time. You might feel overwhelmed by whatever this challenge is about getting this yes. Break it into smaller pieces. Number three, ask yourself, what are the questions I know this lawmaker is going to ask? And how can I answer them first? How can I answer their questions before they ask them? Because I will tell you 100% of the time, folks, the person asking the questions controls the conversation. And if you allow anyone, a lawmaker, a CEO, even a patient of yours to be asking all the questions, they are controlling the conversation. Number four, make this, make this what your mom or your grandmother would have reminded you of. We like to do business with people who are likable. So remember the first three C's in terms of relate. Pay a compliment is the first C. Look for what people are doing well. Second C, find something in common. You don't have to make this stuff up. It's all there if you're willing to look. Number three, let them know you are collaborating. You are in this with them. And remember the three shortcuts I shared with you to trust. Number one, the way we show up, our diploma. Number two, customer testimonials. Give them evidence of others that have done this. And number three, it's okay to admit that if you don't know everything. This is how we fill the trust tank for others and for ourselves. And I walked you through 21 bullet points. If you want those 21, if you want me to send them to you, send me an email. I refer to those as the essentials at dean at yescalate.com. Now, what I'm going to share with you right now, I outlined in the first book I wrote, and it's called The One Page Sales Coach, and it's been up on Amazon for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Many of you may already have a copy of it. But what I want to point out is that when we are engaging with people, we can make engagement very simple if we remember it only has four components. I refer to this as the one page sales coach because I wanted a tool when I was working with salespeople and CEOs that's so simple to use, I could use it on the back of a bar napkin. So my napkin test is if I'm sitting down at dinner with someone and I pull out a bar napkin, at the end of the dinner, if they tell me, hey, Dino, can I have that napkin? I know that I've done something of value. So I start here. The O stands for outcomes. This is where we tell people the bottom line. You could consider this your opening, if you will, but here's where we're going to tell people really quick what we do, who we've done it for, and demonstrate the results. Folks, I'd ask you to consider building your message around access, solutions, and knowledge. What do you do? Who do you give access to? What has been the outcome of that? Who have you done it for? Talk about the solutions and how can you demonstrate your knowledge? Start here. That's what the first box is right here. From there, I want you to ask a question. I'm just curious. The P stands for problems. What do you know about what's going on in this person's world that's causing them pain or putting them at risk? What do you know about where they are now before you? Can you see their world in 3Ds? Can you see their world in dollars? What is affecting them financially? Can you see their world in data? Do you know the number of constituents, et cetera, that are being impacted? Because you want to show them that you can be a positive difference. You can help them in the dollar side. You can help them in the data side. You can make a difference for them. This is before you, this is after you. The S stands for your solutions. And remember, we already brought up that word solutions down here, but how do your solutions change their world financially? Change their world in terms of the number of people you impact. If you can bring a visual 
you want to create a visual of what their world looks like after. If you can show them a before and after picture, very powerful, folks. Because remember, information gets to people's brains 30 times faster through their eyes than through their ears. So the C in the one-page sales coach, remember, it's outcomes or how you open to tell them what's in it for them. It's problems, solutions, and commitment. If you want someone to get a commitment, you need to show them others that have already done this. Can you bring customer testimonials with you? All right. So that's what the OPSC model looks like. If I were to build it on a bar napkin, here's what it looks like. By the way, if you guys want me to send you these handouts, some of the slides I've shown, I sent some samples of them to Lizzie and the team, and I'm happy to send them to you. Again, my email address is down here on the bottom. It's dean at yescalate.com. Boop. Grab a marker down here at the bottom. This is also available on Amazon. Or if you guys want to grab, if you want me to sign a copy, let me know that and I'll send you a copy. By the way, my friend used to say, if you buy a hard copy, I'll come to your house and read it to you. That's a whole different thing though. And I don't have a hard copy, so we're not going to get weird. All right. Here's where we started. And remember, for you folks, it's about the ask. Where did that come from? Pow, there it is. Let me write this in. Your 3D diploma is about access, solutions, knowledge. You can prepare your entire presentation on the back of a bar napkin before you go in to meet with anyone. Draw a line down the center, a line across the middle. Remember, we're here to make a difference. You're going to ask curiosity questions if there's things you don't know. You're going to be prepared before you go in to tell them the outcomes. We're going to be curious about their problems and the greatest sales question in the world. And you can reframe this question using whatever words you want, but it goes like this. If I could show you a way to do these things and solve these problems, would you be interested in hearing how you can be a part of this? That's your ask. All right. We've covered a lot of ground today. I want to cover one more piece in the next few minutes. You go in, you have this interaction. What do you do next? Do you go into the next meeting and have the exact same interaction? Or do you try to use every meeting as an opportunity to learn? When I think about the opportunity you folks have all going together and going into these meetings together to learn from each interaction, I get really excited. So I started my career as a sales coach and I started my career as a sales coach in specific kinds of environments. I refer to them as learning laboratories. They're called call centers. And for example, the Hartford had six call centers with 600 reps all across the country they were customer service reps. And when the executives at the Hartford told them that they were going to teach them to be salespeople, these, well, there were 300, 500, however many of them, they all threatened to quit. Because what's the paradigm people have about selling? It's about manipulation. But here's what I know. Every time we're interacting with anyone and we're looking to make a difference, that engagement, whether we call it sales, whether we call it customer service, there's a path that we can follow. And I shared with you when we're engaging with others, I shared with you the OPSC model as an engagement tool. I had to come up with a model that I could use to teach managers how to coach and to do it in a way that people saw it as positive. Most times when someone says, can I give you a little feedback? What are they looking to give us? a list of all the things they thought we did wrong. That's not coaching, folks. And that's why coaching doesn't happen in most organizations with top performers. You folks are high performers. You don't need me to tell you what to do. Having said that, we all leave meetings and say, oh, I could have said this. 
I should have said this. If I only would have said this, the coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Well, guess what? We want to get better every time. Every interaction is a chance for us to improve, is a chance for us to optimize our performance. So the same way I shared with you a simple model for engaging with a lawmaker or a customer, I'm going to share with you guys a simple model you can use to engage with each other after you meet with lawmakers. And it's called the coaching path. I want you to schedule a few moments when you leave that lawmaker's office or you leave that phone call to actually do a debrief. So I want you to physically schedule and prepare some time after you have this engagement to, to do a debrief with each other. You're then gonna say, okay, here's the agenda. We're gonna ask two questions and then we're gonna task ourselves with focusing on one thing. So here's the agenda. We're going to start by asking, what did we do well? Oh, I don't know. I screwed up here. No, no, no. That's not what I asked. We're not going to focus on where we screwed up. We're going to focus on what did we do well. I guarantee you, you will do things well, folks. And I want you to remind yourself, here's what we did well. Now, the second question I'm going to ask is, if we had that to do over again, is there anything we do differently? And if you have something you want to suggest to one of your peers that they could do differently, I want you to ask permission. Can I share with you something I saw that we might consider do differently? We all know we have a chance to start different in every interaction. Every day is a chance to start different. Every day is a chance to get better, but we're not going to focus on screwing up. We're going to focus on getting better. Of those elements, and by the way, you don't have to do, you don't have to identify a do different. You could say everything went great. Great. Of those things we did well, what are we going to task ourselves to focus on the next meeting? Let's make sure we do that again. Let's be conscious of what works. Let's be thoughtful and conscious. I want you to commit to what you're going to do next. I also want you to specifically write it down. And I want you to look at each other and say, we're doing good. One thing at a time. Incremental improvement, folks, will double our performance over time. We only need to get 1% better every day, and in 70 days, we're twice as good. And I want you folks to hold yourself accountable to what you say you're going to do. So what you might want to do when you go on these meetings is bring a journal with you so that you can document your did wells and do difference. Now, before you go into the next meeting, I want you to review that list and say, here's what we said we did well, here's what we said we're gonna do different, and let's commit to doing that now. So engagement, I see as something that can happen three ways. Number one, it happens with the people we want to get a yes with, meaning outside of our firm. It happens side by side with people we're coaching inside of our firm. And it also happens with ourselves. We can engage ourselves as we look in the mirror, and as we build our own confidence. So today I shared with you several models. I shared with you the SMART model. So you guys can let me know whether that was of value. And we got about six or seven minutes here left in our time. So at some point here, I'm gonna ask that either Lizzie or Renee or, or Amy come on back because I'm gonna engage you guys and ask you, what did you take from today's session? First thing, we covered the SMART model. Second thing I covered with you was the brain's GPS as a model. And the third thing that I just shared with you was the coaching path as a model. So now I'm going to ask you to do three things. If you want to build a system for yourself to remember this, systems are built with these three words, cues, routines, and habit. A cue is a visual you're going to bring with you on these meetings. You might bring my list of the 21 essentials. You might bring that OPSC model. A routine means when you see that cue, it's going to have you do something because the more we can build this in as habits, the more powerful it becomes. So Lizzie, we're, we're at the six minute to the end mark. And I thought I would create a little space here for folks to interact. So folks, if you have a specific takeaway, put it in there. I want to hear from Lizzie what you folks found of value. Also, if you have a question, put it in there as a question so that if you want me to answer it for you, Lizzie can read it I, out. Yeah, out loud. I've got 
three questions, but prior to that, um, can we go back to the chat real quick? I wanted to read this one comment while others are sharing uh, their takeaways. Someone said, napkin, great visual, you are the man. So. I am the man. I am <laughs> I am certainly one of the men, and uh, it is now apparent to me that Jack Dragon might be the man, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I, well, Dean, I had to take it. You had to meet him. It had to happen. If it didn't it happen awesome. now, thank you. It thank was you. awesome. Okay. So uh, we've got three questions here. Dean, you're so warm and human. Virtual, any tips to see the human on Zoom for next week? Yes. Yes. So um, several tips. Remember the biggest tip, and I know you guys already know this. Look at the camera. Do not look at, here I'm looking at Lizzie. This is weird. This is weird. Lizzie doesn't know what the hell I'm looking at. I'm looking at Lizzie. But right now I'm looking at Lizzie. So that's the biggest tip I can give you. Now, one of the things that I do, and this is a little trick, when I'm on a Zoom call, if I'm nervous, I will right click on my little picture and hide my picture from myself. Because the more I look at my picture, the more I obsess about my picture. Hide yourself if you can. Now, folks, I have a checklist that I can send you five things to give better Zoom calls. I just want to show you something. So I'm using a tool and I'm using some pieces of equipment that you guys could all use if you want to. Let me just give you the, the tip in all of this. If Dino can do it, you guys can do it. I ain't no Jack Dragon. I'm just Dino. <laughs> is this and when Dino I get to is, snap? You, you snap? Okay, there. Guess what? Snap again, Lizzie. Hold on. Before you snap. Oh. Before you snap again, Lizzie, okay. I want to show the group what I really look like right now in my home office. Go ahead, snap your finger again. Snap your finger again. This is with no high def camera and no proper lighting. Now, I'm not saying you guys come through this bad. Lizzie, snap your fingers again. This is me with the lighting and my high def camera turned on. Guys, you need the following things. Number one, you got to have proper lighting. If you don't have proper lighting, you know that you're looking like you're in an Al-Qaeda torture cell in Guantanamo. People don't <laughs> trust you when you look like you're in an Al-Qaeda torture cell in Guantanamo. First biggest tip, you got to look like you mean business. Second biggest tip, if you really want to pull this off and you really want to look like you mean business, you got to get a green screen so that this can be blacked out and I can put whatever I want behind me on that green screen. I can put my presentation up in place of me. I can put me up. I can put me into my presentation. And folks, it's all as easy as a little tool. The software is for free. There's millions of gamers that use it, which means that there's millions of how-to videos. It's called OBS Studio. And I can introduce you to a Vistage member who's a friend of mine who can teach you and your team how to do this. But you program it all in this little $100 box. And then whenever I hit a button, whenever Lizzie snaps her fingers, I'm going to a different place on this box, okay? Understand you gotta have the right equipment. Let me tell you the second thing you gotta have. You gotta have great visuals. If you're gonna be putting stuff up on the screen, you gotta have pictures. The most important thing, the third thing you need to have, you need to teach yourself how to use the basics of Zoom. This is a whiteboard within Zoom. You guys all have this. If you have a whiteboard, you can make a list. You can take notes. By the way, the whiteboard saves and you can send it so, to someone as a PDF afterwards. You have to teach yourself the basics of using Zoom. Here's another basic of using Zoom. I'm gonna show a PowerPoint slide and then I'm gonna expand it and then I'm gonna pick up a highlighter pen and I'm gonna actually write, I use a little touch screen. Folks, what I'm doing right now is on a $800 all-in-one HP computer from Best Buy, okay? And I'm gonna give you the biggest tip and you guys are all gonna roll your eyes and say, we already know that, but some of you may not, because I will tell you there's an executive at PCCA who thanks me in every email she sends, she thanks me for giving her this tip. The tip is this, do you have a cord connecting your laptop or your computer to your wireless router? Do not be using wireless for important Zoom calls, folks. It's a $14 cord at Best Buy and you can get an adapter. Get your router, plug in. I have gigabytes of speed here in my home office. 
I only have like a hundred meg when I go wireless. And if you have other people in your home, they're all taking a piece of your wires. What are you smiling at, Lizzie? We got a minute left. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Great job. Two more quick questions. And yeah, Amy's right here next to me. And she is, yes, thank you for the I Ethernet was never cord put has Amy changed on the her spot. life. This is not about shaming anyone. No, this no. Is about <laughs> no, not shaming. She's thrilled. Okay. So, when we do these visits uh, next week with the lawmakers, one of the asks is we call it the in-district visit program, right? So we're inviting the lawmaker into the pharmacy. This is a very long sales cycle. It can take any, I mean, probably average is a year and a half, it can be anywhere from six months to three years in the making. How often do you suggest um, we follow up to get to yes? And is there any, any tips on shortening that sales cycle? There's hundreds of tips. And first of all, there's a fine line between follow-up and stalking. Yeah. So let's just agree with that, okay? Sure. But let's also say this, are you following up in multiple channels? I never send someone an email when I can also send them a voicemail and when I can also send them something in regular mail. We often assume that people get our messages. Do you know how often someone says, did you get my message? I go, holy smokes, I didn't even see it. And it was a week ago they sent it to me. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how our stuff gets lost? Of course. Okay, think about how you can stand out. Now I hear, I don't know if if, uh, if Q or someone's telling me to shut up. I hear something in the background there. Are we okay, Lizzie? So, okay. so Lizzie, just, 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 just know this. You gotta give it, insert your name here. You gotta give it the Dino test. I ask myself, how often would I want someone to follow up? And I just want to share this with you guys. Old sales best practice is still true. When you follow up, don't assume they remember. Start from the beginning. I have a young man. He wants to redo my website. He works with a dear friend of mine. He's done an awesome job with her. He put this proposal together. Huge proposal. Huge proposal. It's going to change my life. I know it's going to change my life. After I got done talking to him, I never had time in the next three weeks to look at his proposal again. When Matthew followed up, he didn't, he followed up and I knew what he was going to do. He was going to make a mistake, but I love this young man. I love him already. Matthew said, Dean, so what do you think? I said, Matthew, let's start over again. Pretend this is our first call. Review with me what I agreed to. Show me the benefits again. Do not assume I even had time to look at your proposal because Matthew, I want to do this with you. And the fact that I haven't looked at your proposal has nothing to do with my interest. It has to do with my current activity level. Right. I got so busy, Matthew, I have not even looked at the proposal. And I'm telling you, Lizzie, this kid's proposal, he's going to change my life. I just haven't had time. He goes, holy gosh, that makes me feel so much better. I saw you didn't even look at it. I go, Matthew, never assume that what you sent isn't of value. Never assume that we don't want it. Assume that we're busy and assume that I'm gonna be in your life until your kid is away at college and you bring him on stage and introduce him to me. <laughs> Folks, here, this is not, this is, Lizzie said, this ain't a one-year process. This ain't a two-year process. Do you know what this is? This is a lifetime process. Mm -hmm. I want you to approach people as if they're people you love. And I want you to ask yourself, would you follow up with someone you love and go, hey, what'd you think? How come I haven't heard from you? No. You'd say, hey, let me make this easy for you. Let me start over real quick and remind you of why we're doing this. If this is not, if you guys aren't doing something you love, and if you're not doing it because you know you're making a difference in the world, we got to think about doing something else. Okay? So. Okay. Good, good there, Liz. Yeah. Very last question. Um, knowing that, you know, you actually lobbied in 2019 and I know you were giving coaching and pointers along the way. Do you recall anything that you just thought, gosh, if, if you could have that one degree to make a difference, you know? Yeah. So there was a, there was a, there was a, we went into this one legislator's office and I want to say that your pharmacist um, and I believe he was of Indian descent and I believe he was in Brooklyn or the Bronx mm -hmm. and his enthusiasm for what he was doing, his enthusiasm for how he was changing people's lives, his enthusiasm. Folks, we can feel that. Influence is a transfer of emotion. 
Start with your own belief. Make sure you're confident because people are going to feel that. And get those lobster chemicals going. Okay. (laughs) Get yourself feeling good before you walk in there. Awesome. Dean, thank you. I know uh, as the comment we heard earlier, you're the man. There's a couple more um, here. State the bottom line up front and then love the Tyson quote. It pairs nicely with something we talk about. Follow your procedure always. You can't ignore the basics when under pressure or punched in the mouth. Awesome work, Dean. That is a perfect send off for you. Go enjoy graduation with Devin. It's a big day in your family. Thank you for taking the time to be with our PCCA family. My, my pleasure. There's a list of these. If you guys want them, I sent them to Lizzie and the team or send me an email. Lizzie, it's always Great. a joy to be with you. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Dean. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Cheers.